Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson, Chapter 28, The Chief Culprit in the Destruction of All the Very Saintly Labours of Ashiata Shemash. You remember that I've already told you that the basis of the initiative for the arising there of the factors which became the causes of the final destruction of the still surviving remains of the beneficent results of the conscious labours of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash for the subsequent generations of your favourites, did not issue from the learned beings who were then assembled from almost the whole of the surface of the earth in the city of Babylon, but that these latter, as it had long before become proper to most of the terrestrial learned beings of new formation, were only like contagious bacilli, the unconscious disseminators of every kind of then existing evil for their own and for subsequent generations. The basis for all further great and small maleficent activities and unconscious maleficent manifestations of the learned beings of that time concerning the destruction of even the last remnants of the results beneficent for the three brain beings there obtained from the very saintly conscious labours of the essence-loving Ashiata Shemash were, as my later detailed researches concerning these further very saintly activities made clear to me, the invention of a learned being well known there in his time, also belonging to the number of learned beings of new formation, and named Lentrohamsonin. As a result of his inner what is called double gravity centred existence, the highest being part of the presence of this terrestrial three brained being was coated and perfected up to the required gradation of objective reason and later this highest being part, became, as I have once already told you, one of those 313 highest being bodies who are called eternal hasnamous individuals, and who have the place of their further existence in the universe on a small planet existing under the name of eternal retribution. Now, Strictly speaking, about this terrestrial three-brained being Lentrohamsonin, I would have to fulfil my promise and explain to you in detail about the expression Hasnamus, but I prefer to do so a little later in the proper place of the sequence in this tale. The mentioned maleficent invention, or as they themselves, that is the contemporary terrestrial learned beings, name such an invention of a learned being there of new formation, a composition, or even a creation, was actualized, as I've already told you, two or more centuries before the time when, during my fifth sojourn there, I first reached the city of Babylon, where partly by coercion and partly voluntarily, learned beings had been assembled from the surface of almost the whole of that planet. The maleficent composition of that learned being of former centuries reached the learned beings of the said Babylonian epoch by means of what is called a kashirit, a kashiritler, on which this invention was engrossed by the said learned Lentrohamson in himself. I find it very necessary to inform you a little more in detail about the history of the arising of this Lentrohamson in, and also how, owing to which accidental circumstances of his environment, he later became there a great learned being and authority for his contemporary beings of almost the whole surface of your planet. In addition to this history itself being very characteristic, it can also serve as a good elucidatory example of that practice which has long ago become firmly established in the process of the existence of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy, the result of which is that several of them at first become, so to say, authorities for other learned beings of new formation, and thereby later for all the unfortunate ordinary beings there. The details concerning the conditions of the arising and subsequent formation of this Lentrohamsonin into a responsible being chanced to become clear to me by the way during my investigations of which aspects of the strange psyche of your favourites were the basis for the gradual change and ultimately also for the total destruction of all those beneficent special forms and customs in the process of their being existence which had been introduced and firmly fixed in this process by the ideally foreseeing reason 
of our now omnicosmic most very saintly Ashyatashimash during the period of his self-preparation to be that which he now is for the whole of the universe. It was then that I learned that this Lentrohamsinin arose, or as it is said there, was born, on the continent Asia, in the capital of Nievia, the town Konpukon. The conception of his arising, resulting from the blending of two heterogeneous exoeheries, formed in two already elderly three-brained Kishapmartnian beings there. His producers, or as it is said there, his parents, having chosen as the place for their permanent existence the capital of Nievia, moved there three terrestrial years before the arising of that later universal Hasnamus. For his elderly and very rich parents, he was what is called a firstborn, for although the blending of their exio had been many times actualized between them before him, yet, as I found out, they, being deeply engaged in the business of acquiring riches and not wishing to have any hindrance for this, had recourse at each actualizing of this sacred blending to what is called Tusi, or as your contemporary favourites express themselves, abortion. Towards the end of his activities in acquiring riches, the source of the active principle of his origin, or as it is said there, his father, had several of his own what are called caravans, and he also owned special caravanseries, for the exchange of goods in various cities of this same Nievia. And the source of the passive principle of his origin, that is his mother, was at, the f- was at first of the profession of what is called Tusidji, but later on a small mountain she organised what is called a holy place, and published board and published broadcast among other beings information concerning its supposed special significance, namely that beings of the female sex without children would, on visiting this place, acquire the possibility of having them. When this couple, in what is called the decline of their years, had already become very rich, they moved to the capital city Konbukon in order to exist there, but only for their own pleasure. But soon they felt that without a real result, or as they say there, in childlessness, there cannot be full pleasure, and from that time on, without sparing what is called money, they took every kind of measure to obtain such a result. With this end in view, they visited various holy places existing there for that purpose, of course with the exception of their own holy mountain, and resorted to every kind of what are called medical means, which purported to assist the blending of heterogeneous exio And when eventually by chance such a blending was actualised, then there indeed arose after a certain time just that long-awaited result of theirs later called Lentrohamsinim. From the very first day of his arising, the parents were, as it is said, completely wrapped up in what they described as their God-sent result, or son and they spent vast sums on his pleasures and on what is called his education. To give their son the very best upbringing and education the earth could provide became for them, as it is said there, their ideal. With this aim, they hired for him various what are called tutors and teachers, both from among those existing in the country Nievia and from various distant lands. These latter, that is, these foreign tutors and teachers, they then invited chiefly from the country which at the present time is called Egypt. Already by the time this terrestrial, what is called Papa's and Mama's darling, was approaching the age of a responsible being, he was, as it is said there, very well instructed and educated. That is, he had in his presence a great deal of data, for all kinds of being ego plasticuri, consisting, as it is usual there, according to the abnormally established conditions of their existence, of various fantastic and dubious information. And later, when he became a responsible being, he manifested himself automatically through all kinds of corresponding accidental shocks. 
When this later great learned being there reached the age of a responsible being, and although he had indeed a great deal of information, or as it is called there, knowledge, nevertheless he had absolutely no being in regard to this information or knowledge which he had required. Well, when the said Mama and Papa's darling became a learned being there of new formation, then because on the one hand there was no being whatsoever in his presence, and on the other hand because there had already by this time been thoroughly crystallised in him those consequences of the properties of the organ Kunderbuffer, which exist there under the names of vanity, self-love, swagger and so forth, the ambition arose in him to become a famous learned being, not only among the beings of Nyeria, but also among the whole of the surface of their planet. So with all his presence he dreamed and ruminated how he could attain this. For many days he then thought seriously, and finally he decided, first of all, to invent a theory upon a topic which nobody before him had ever touched upon, and secondly to inscribe this invention of his upon such a Keshiritler as nobody had ever before inscribed or would ever be able to do in the future either. And from that day he made preparations for the actualising of that decision of his. With the help of his many slaves, he first prepared a Kashiritlia, such as never before existed. At that period of flow of time on the planet Earth, the Kashiritlias were generally made from one or another part of the hide of a quadruped being called their buffalo. But Lentro Hamsonin made his Kashiritlia from a hundred buffalo hides joined together. These Kashiritlias were replaced there later by what is called parchment. Well, when this unprecedented Kashiritlia Kashi was ready, the subsequent great Lentro Hamsonin inscribed upon it his invention concerning a topic which, indeed, it had occurred to nobody to discuss before, and for which, in truth, there was no reason why it should have been. Namely, in those wiseacrings of his, he then criticised in every way the existing order of collective existence. This Kashiritlia began thus. Man's greatest happiness consists in not being dependent on any other personality whatsoever and in being free from the influence of any other person, whoever he may be. Some other time I will explain to you how your favourites, the strange three-brained beings there on the planet Earth, in general understood freedom. This subsequently universal Hasnamus inscribed further as follows. Undeniably, life under the present state organisation is now far better for us than it used to be before. But where then is that real freedom of ours upon which our happiness must depend? Don't we work and labour as much now as during all the former state organisations? Haven't we to labour and sweat to get the barley indispensable to us to live and not to starve to death like chained dogs? Our chiefs, guides and counsellors are always telling us about some other sort of world, supposedly so much better than here among us on earth. And where life is in every respect beatific for the souls of those men who have lived worthily here on earth. Don't we live here now worthily? Don't we always labour and sweat for our daily bread? If all that our chiefs and counsellors tell us is true, and their own way of living here on earth really corresponds to what is required of their souls for the other world, then of course God ought, and even must, in this world also, give more possibilities to them than to us, ordinary mortals. If all that our chiefs and counsellors tell and try to make us believe is really true, let them prove it to us, ordinary mortals, by facts. Let them prove it to us, for instance, that they can at least change a pinch of the common sand in which, thanks to our sweat, our daily bread arises into bread. If our present chiefs and counsellors do this, then I myself will be the first to run and kneel and kiss their feet. But meanwhile, as this is not so, we ourselves must struggle and we ourselves must strive hard for our real happiness and for our real freedom, and also to free ourselves from the need of having to sweat. 
It's true that for eight months of the year we now have no trouble in obtaining our daily bread. But then how we must labour those four summer months and exhaust ourselves getting the barley we need. Only he who sows and mows that barley knows the hard labour required. True, for eight months we are free, but only from physical labours, and for this our consciousness, namely our dearest and highest part, must remain day and night in slavery to these illusory ideas which are always being dinned into us by our chiefs and counsellors. No, enough. We ourselves, without our present chiefs and counsellors, who have become such without our, our onsent, sorry, without our consent, must strive for our real freedom and our real happiness. And we can only obtain real freedom and real happiness if we all act as one, and that is to say, all for one and one for all. But for this, we must first destroy all that is old. And we must do so to make room for the new life we shall ourselves create that will give us real freedom and real happiness, down with dependence on others. We ourselves will be masters of our own circumstances, and no longer they who rule our lives, and do so without our knowledge and without our consent. Our lives must be governed and guided by those whom we ourselves shall elect from our midst, that is, by men only from amongst those who themselves struggle for our daily barley. And we must elect these governors and counsellors on the basis of equal rights, without distinction of sex or age, by universal, direct, equal and open ballot. Thus ended the said famous Keshiritlia. When this subsequent universal Hasnamus Lentro Hamsonin had finished inscribing this Kashiritlia, indeed unprecedented there, he arranged an enormous and costly banquet to which he invited all the learned beings from all of Nievia, taking upon himself all their travelling expenses, and at the end of this banquet, banquet he showed them his Kashiritlia. When the learned beings then gathered at that free feast from almost the whole of Nivea, saw that indeed unprecedented Kashiritlia, they were at first so astounded that they became, as it is said there, as if petrified, and only after a considerable time did they gradually begin looking at each other with dumbfounded glances and exchanging opinions in whispers. Chiefly, they asked one another, how was it possible that not a single learned being, nor a single ordinary being had known or guessed that there in their own country such a learned being with such knowledge existed? Suddenly, one of them, namely the oldest among them, who enjoyed the greatest reputation, jumped up on the table like a boy, and in a loud voice, and with the intonation which had already long before become proper to the learned beings there of new formation, and which had also reached the contemporary learned beings, uttered the following. Listen, and all of you be aware that we, the representatives of terrestrial beings, assembled here, who have thanks to our great learning, already attained independent individuality have the happiness to be the first to behold with our own eyes the creation of a Messiah, a divine consciousness, sent from above to reveal world truths to us. Thereupon began that usual maleficent what is called mutual inflation, which had already long been practised among the learned beings of new formation, and chiefly on account of which no true knowledge which has chanced to reach them ever evolves there, as it does everywhere else in the universe, even merely from the passage of time itself. But on the contrary, even the knowledge once that already attained there is destroyed, and its possessors always become shallower and shallower. And the rest of the learned beings then began shouting and pushing each other in order to get near Lentro Hamsen in, and addressing him as their long-awaited messiah, they conveyed to him by their admiring glances, what is called their high titillation. The most interesting thing about it all is that the reason why all the other learned beings 
were so greatly amazed and so freely gave vent to what are called their learned snivelings, lay in a certain extremely strange conviction which had been formed in the psyche of your favourites, thanks as always to the same abnormally established conditions of ordinary existence, that if anybody becomes a follower of an already well-known and important being, he thereby seems to be to all other beings almost as well-known and important himself. So it was on the strength of his being very rich, and what is more important, already very famous, that all the other learned beings of that time of the country Nivea immediately manifested themselves approvingly towards this Lentro Hamsonim. Well then, my dear boy, when after the said banquet the learned beings of Nivea returned home, they immediately began firstly to speak among their neighbours and later more and more widely, here, there and everywhere, already about that unprecedented Kashiritlia itself, and secondly, already foaming at the mouth to persuade and to convince everybody of the truth of those revelations which that great Lentro Hamsonin had inscribed on this Kashiritlia. The result of it all was that the ordinary beings of the town Konbukon, as well as of other parts of the country Nivea, talked among themselves of nothing but these revelations. And gradually, as it also usually happens there, almost every being became divided into two mutually opposing parties, one of which favoured the invention of the subsequent universal Hasnamus, and the other the already existing and well-fixed forms of being existence. Thus it continued that during most Sorry, thus it continued during almost a whole terrestrial year, during which time the ranks of the contending parties increased everywhere, and towards each other they grew one of their particular properties called hate, the result of which was that one sorrowful day in the town of Konkbukon itself, there suddenly began among the beings who had become followers of one or the other of the two said mutually opposite currents, their process of what is called a civil war, Civil war is the same as war. The difference is only that in ordinary war, beings of one community destroy the beings of another community, while in a civil war, the process of reciprocal destruction proceeds among beings of one and the same community, as for example, brother annihilates brother, father, son, uncle, nephew, and so on. At the outset, during the four days that the horrible process was at its height in Kronkbukon, and the intention of the other beings of the whole country of Nivea was concentrated on it, everything was still relatively quiet in the other towns, but here and there small what are called skirmishes occasionally took place. When at the end of the fourth day, those who were for the invention of Lentro Hamsonin, that is, for the learned beings, were victorious in Kronbukon, then, from that time on, the same process also began at all the large and small points of the whole surface of Nievia. That widespread, terrifying process continued until there appeared hordes of learned beings who, as it said, feeling firm ground beneath their feet, compelled all the surviving beings to accept the ideas of Lentro Hamsonin, and immediately destroyed everything, and from then on all the three-brained beings of Nievia became followers of the invention of Lentro Hamsonin, and soon after, in that community, there was established a special what is called Republic. A little later, the community Nivea, being at that period great and what is called powerful, began, as it also usually happens there, making war on the neighbouring communities for the purpose of imposing upon them also her new form of state organisation. From that time on, my boy, on the largest continent of your planet, the processes of reciprocal destruction among these strange three-brained beings began to proceed as before, and at the same time, they were gradually changed and finally destroyed those various beneficent forms of their ordinary existence which had already been fixed thanks to the ideally foreseeing reason of our now most very saintly Ashyata Shimash. Thereupon there again began to be formed on the surface of your planet, only to be destroyed anew 
and to give place to others, numerous separate distinct communities with every kind of form of inner state organisation. Although the direct effect of that maleficent invention of the now universal Hasnemus Lentrohamsinin was that among your favourites the practice was revived of existing in, several, in separate distinct communities and they again resumed their periodic reciprocal destruction yet within many of these newly arisen independent communities on the continent Asia beings still continued to conform in their ordinary existence to many of the unprecedentedly wise foreseen uh, usages of the very saintly Ashyata Shimash for their ordinary being existence, which usages had already been inseparably fused into their automatically flowing process of daily existence. And those to blame for the final destruction of these said usages and customs that still remained in certain communities were those learned beings who were then assembled in the city of Babylon. And they were then to blame in this respect owing to the following. When owing to that famous question of the beyond, they organised the general planetary conference of all the learned beings there. There happened to be also among the learned beings who went to Babylon on their own accord, the great grandson of Lentro Hamsin and himself, who had also become a learned being and he took with him there to the city of ba Babylon an exact copy of the mentioned Kashiritlia, but made on papyrus, the original of which had been inscribed by his great-grandfather and which he had obtained by inheritance, and at the very height of the frenzy concerning the question of the soul, during one of the last big general meetings of the learned beings, he read aloud the contents of that maleficent invention of his great-grandfather's whereupon it, it occurred, as it had also become proper to the sorry learned beings of this planet, thanks to their strange reason, that from one question which interested them, they at once passed to quite another, namely from the question of the soul to the question of what is called politics. Thereupon, in the city of Babylon, Meetings and discussions again began everywhere concerning the various kinds of already existing state organisations and those which in their opinion ought to be formed. As the basis of all their discussions, they took, of course, the truths indicated in the invention of Lentro Hamsonin, this time expounded on what is called a papyrus that had been taken there by his great-grandson, and a copy of which almost every learned being who was then in Babylon carried in his pocket. For several months they discussed and argued, and as a result they this time split into parties. That is to say, all the learned beings then in the city of Babylon split into two independent what are called sections under the following names. The first section of Neomothists the second section of, of Paleomothists. Each of these sections of learned beings soon had its adherents from among the ordinary beings in the city of Babylon, and once again things would certainly have ended also with a civil war if the Persian king, hearing of it all, had not immediately cracked them on their learned noddles. A number of these learned beings were executed by him, others were imprisoned with lice, and still others were dispatched to places where even now, as Mullanassa Edin would say, French champagne could not be taken. Only a few of those who were clearly shown to have been occupied with all this, only because, as it is said there, they were mad, were permitted to return to their own countries, and those among them who had taken no part whatever in political questions were not only given full liberty to return to their native land, but by the order of the mentioned Persian king, their return to their native land was even accompanied with every kind of honour. Well, my boy, my, those Babylonian learned beings who, owing to various reasons, survived and were scattered everywhere over the surface of almost the whole of the planet, continued by momentum their wiseacring, the basis of which they made, of course not consciously, but simply mechanically, those two leading questions which had arisen, 
and which had been the questions of the day during the said Babylonian events, namely the famous questions concerning the soul of men and the inner communal organisation. The result of these wiseacrings of theirs was that over the whole continent of Asia, civil wars again broke out in various communities and the process of mass reciprocal destruction between different communities. The destruction which thus proceeded of the remnants of the results of the conscious labours of the very saintly Ashyata Shimash continued on the continent of Asia for about a century and a half. In spite of this, in some places, there were preserved and even by momentum were still carried out certain forms that had been created by Ashyata Shimash for their beneficent being existence. And when the three brained beings there who arose and existed on a neighbouring continent now called Europe, they began taking part in the Asiatic Wars when hordes with the arch vainglorious Greek called Alexander of Macedonia at their head were dispatched thence and passed almost everywhere over the continent of Asia. They made, as it is said, a clean sweep from the surface of that ill-fated planet of everything that had been established and had still been preserved and carried out, so clean a sweep that it left not even the trace of the memory that there could once have existed on the surface of the planet such a bliss specially and intentionally created for their existence by such a reason, whose possessor is now one of the seven most very saintly omnicosmic individuals, without whose participation in our uni-being common father, without whose participation even our uni-being common father does not allow himself to actualise anything. And now, my boy, after my tale about this Lentro Hamsonin, thanks to which you obtained to a certain degree a conspective account of the consequences for subsequent generations ensuing from the activities of such a typical representative of eternal Hasnamus individuals, from among the three brained beings of the planet Earth, it would now be quite opportune to explain to you, as I promised, a little more in detail about the significance of the word Hasnamus. In general, those independent individuals are called and defined by the word Hasnamus, in whom, among what are called individual impulses, a certain something arises which participates in what is called the completed formation of independent individualities in the common presences of three brain beings, both of the highest possible coating as well as those who consist only of the planetary body alone. This something in these separate cosmic individuals arises and blends in the process of the transformation of substances in them with the crystallizations resulting from the action of the entire spectrum of certain what are called nalu osnian impulses. This nalu osnian spectrum of impulses consists on the basis of that chief cosmic law, the sacred heptapara parshinok, according to the source of its essence in respect of the perception of engenderings and the resulting manifestations of seven heterogeneous aspects. If these separate aspects of the entire spectrum of Nalu Osnian impulses are described according to the notions of your favourites and expressed in their language, they might then be defined as follows. Number one, every kind of depravity, conscious as well as unconscious. Two, the feeling of self satisfaction from leading others astray. Three, the irresistible inclination to destroy the existence of other breathing creatures. 4. The urge to become free from the necessity of actualising the being efforts demanded by nature. 5. The attempt by every kind of artificiality to conceal from others what in their opinion are one's physical defects. 6. The calm self-contentment in the use of what is not personally deserved. 7. The striving to be not what one is. This certain something which arises in the presences of definite individuals owing to the enumerated Naluosnian impulses 
besides being the cause of what are called serious retributive suffering consequences for these individuals themselves, who has the particularity that as soon as the action of what is called intense effort ceases in one of these individuals, the radiations proper to one or other of the aspects of the manifestations of this something have a greater effect on those around him and become a factor for engendering the same in them. In the common presence of every kind of three-brained being there can arise during the process of his planetary existence four kinds of independent Hasnamous individuals. The first kind of Hasnamous individual is a three-brained being who, while acquiring in his common presence that something, still consists only of his planetary body, and who, during the process of his sacred Rascuano, is subject to the corresponding consequences of the presence in him of the properties of this something, and is thus destroyed for ever such as he is. The second kind of Hasnamus individual is that Kesjan body of a three-brained being which is coated in his common presence with the participation of that same something, and which acquiring as is proper to such a cosmic arising the property of the Turianurino, that is, non-decomposition in any sphere of that planet on which he arose, has to exist by being formed again and again in a certain way such as he is, until the certain something will have been eliminated from him. The third kind of Hasnamas individual is the highest being body or soul, during the coating of which, in the common presence of a three-brained being, this something arises and participates, and he also acquires the property of Turinorino, but this time proper to this highest being body, and that is to say, this arising is no longer subject to decomposition, not only in the spheres of that planet on which he had his arising, but also in all other spheres of the great universe. The fourth kind of Hasnamus individual is similar to the third, but with this difference, that the Hasnamus of the third kind has the possibility of at some time succeeding in becoming, so to say, cleansed from this something, whereas for the fourth kind such a possibility is lost forever. That is why this fourth kind of Hasnamus is called an eternal Hasnamus individual. For these four kinds of Hasnamous individuals, owing to their having in their presences this something, the mentioned retributive suffering consequences are various and correspond to the nature of each kind, as well as to what is called objective responsibilities, ensuing from the primordial providence and hopes and expectations of our common father concerning these cosmic actualizations. For the Hasnamus of the first kind, namely when this something is acquired by a being still consisting only of just a planetary body alone, the decomposition of this planetary body of his does not proceed according to the general rule, that is to say, the cessation of the functioning in his organism of every kind of sensed impulse does not proceed simultaneously with the approach of the sacred Rascuano, that is, death. But the process of this sacred Rascuano begins in him still during his planetary existence and proceeds in the parts, that is, one by one, there gradually cease to participate in his common presence, the functioning of one or other of his separate independent spiritualized localizations. Or, as your favourites would say there, in such a being, first of all, one of his brains with all his appertaining functions dies, and later on the second one dies and only then does the final death of the being approach. In addition to this, after the final death, the disintegration of all the active elements of which the given planetary body was formed proceeds firstly much more slowly than usual, and secondly with the inextinguishable action only lessened in proportion to the volatilization of the active elements of the mentioned sensed impulses he had during life. For the second kind of Hasnamus individual, that is, when the Kesjan body of a three-brained being becomes such, the corresponding consequences are that such an indeed unfortunate arising, freed from the planetary body of a three-brained being on the one hand, 
not having the possibility of perfecting himself independently of and without a planetary coating, does not succeed in eliminating from his presence this maleficent something, even not always acquired by his own fault, which something is always and with everything in the universe, an obstacle for the correct flowing of the common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process. On the other hand, owing to the property in him of Turinorino, that is, not being subject to decomposition in any sphere of that solar system in which he is formed, he must inevitably be again coated in a planetary body, and in most cases with the exterior forms of a being of one or two brain system, and in view of the brevity in general of the duration of beings of these planetary forms, and also not having time to adapt himself to a single exterior form, he must constantly begin all over again in the form of another being of the planet with the full uncertainty as to the result of his coating. Hmm. And as regards the third kind of Hasnimus individual, namely when the highest being body of a three-brained being becomes such, and when this certain something participates in his coating in such a quality that he never loses the possibility of freeing himself from it, the matter is still more terrible, chiefly because he, as a higher cosmic arising, who according to the foreseeing first sourced principle of everything existing, was predetermined to serve the aim of helping the government of the world increasing world, and on whom from the moment of completion of his formation, even when he was not yet perfected in reason, was placed the responsibility for every subjective voluntary as well as involuntary manifestation, and has the possibility to succeed in eliminating from his presence this something, exclusively only by the action of the results of intentionally actualized part dog duty, and that is to say of conscious labours and intentional sufferings. Here such a higher being body must inevitably always suffer correspondingly, having already acquired the gradation of what is called the degree of cognition of one's own individuality. Until this certain something is entirely eradicated from his common presence. As a place for the suffering existence of such a high order of Hasnamas individuals, the higher sacred individuals have intentionally allotted from the totality of the large cosmic concentrations four planets disharmonized in their subjective functioning, situated in various most remote corners of the great universe. One of these four disharmonized planets, called Eternal Retribution, is specially prepared for the Eternal Hasnamus individuals, and the other three for those higher being bodies of Hasnamuses, in whose common presences there is still the possibility of at some time or other eliminating from themselves the mentioned maleficent something. The three small planets exist under the names of Remorse of Conscience, Repentance, self-reproach. Here it's interesting to notice that from among all the highest being bodies which have been coated, coated and perfected in every kind of exterior form a three-brained being there have, so far reached the planet retribution from the whole universe, only 313, two of whom had their arising in your planet, and one of these is the highest being body of Lentro Hamsonim. On that planet, retribution, these eternal Hasnamus individuals must constantly endure those incredible sufferings called Inkiranoodle, which are like the sufferings called remorse of conscience, but only much more painful. The chief torture of the state of these highest being bodies is that they must always experience these terrifying sufferings fully conscious of their utter hopelessness of their cessation. End of chapter and end of book one.